Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1971 Italian giallo film Death Walks on High Heels. I watched it on this Blu-ray that I got through Arrow Video. You can see it's Region B based off this thing, but I happen to have a region free player, thankfully, so I can see stuff like this. Um, you know, going into this, I didn't know a whole lot. I'd heard a little bit about Death Walks on High Heels. Uh, specifically, I'd heard Eli Roth talk about it on a uh, in an interview, and I was like, oh, it must be at least decent. But I wasn't prepared for how much I was going to really enjoy this film. Um, I thought it's great. It's jumped up into my top 10 giallos that I've seen, and I've now seen, I think, 38 giallo films at this point, but I'm still going. And on that note, if you are big into giallo, I have a whole playlist of movie review videos on giallo films, just giallo films on my uh, channel, so just know that. So anyway, Death Walks on High Heels, directed by Luciano Ercoli. This is, this is my first Ercoli film. He also did films such as The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion, which I think I ordered. I think I purchased that. I just haven't gotten it yet. And uh, Death Walks at Midnight, which I almost purchased but didn't, but it's still on my list. i got to limit myself when I make these purchases, you know. Uh, this was written by Ernesto Gestaldi. Now, this is a very... A recognizable name if you've seen a lot of uh, Giallo films and you've looked into who's written the scripts. Now, listen to all the th scripts he's worked on. The Vampire and the Ballerina, Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory, The Whip and the Body, Your, Bo Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, All the Colors of the Dark, The Case of the Bloody Iris, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, Torso, The Suspicious Death of a Minor, The Scorpion with Two Tails, The Case of the Scorpion's Tail. <sighs> that's a lot. And there's a lot of giallo. It's not all giallo that I just listed, and there's a lot of giallo. But he has a lot more writing credits you can look on IMDb. This was also written by Monahan Velasco, uh, who also wrote The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion and Death Walks at Midnight, so worked with Gastaldi on those. So anyway. Uh, this film is also known as Death Stalks on High Heels and Nights of Love and Terror. Um... Sure, whatever. Uh, there's always multiple titles for these things. So the character of Captain Lenny, some people may have watched this film and been like, man, that guy Captain Lenny, or the guy who's playing Captain Lenny, looks so familiar. And that immediately clicked with me as soon as I saw Captain Lenny, which, by the way, great character. Um, especially because, like, let's give it up for Captain Lenny for the fact that he tells police, like, he admits to being a peeping Tom, to being a thief, stealing money from someone's house, and to a witnessing a murder and saying absolutely nothing about it, and then basically assumes that he's not going to end up being arrested, because he was trying to keep from being arrested for the murder by saying all these things, and then he's just like, oh yeah, glad I got that off my chest, and they're like, yeah, you're going to jail. Right. So anyway, the guy who plays Captain Lenny is George Regard, who also was in the films, other Giallo films, a Lizard in a Woman's Skin, All the Colors of the Dark, Knife of Ice, The Case of the Bloody Iris, and Eyeball, which I've seen and reviewed all of those on my channel, except Eyeball. I still need to get to Eyeball. That's on my list to get as well. There are a lot of giallos on my list to get. I have more coming in. So you get the idea that the guy who ends up being killed immediately in this film is not really a good guy. They do a good job of kind of telegraphing that by showing, you know, the one eye patch that indicates not necessarily a good person um not today i'm saying back then that was one of those indicators uh also the fact that he has like a gun tucked in his belt in his waistline in the very beginning so when he gets killed you're just kind of like bad guy i don't know bad guy killing bad guy who knows you know obviously in the end we find out that that was um nicole's father who had pulled off a diamond heist with some other people who were involved, and then he gets murdered by Dr. Matthews, as we know. Um, they introduce a diamond heist into the mix, and the suspect is Nicole's father, who was the first victim, and the killer was looking for the diamonds, too. Uh, I do like that twist to the whole story, because it kind of ups the stakes. It's not just the typical giallo of, oh, we're looking for the, the black-gloved killer, who is it? It's, there's a diamond heist thrown into the mix. So I just think it makes for a more rich story, more intriguing story, in my opinion. And in general, I just think the writing on this one was quite good. I really did enjoy it. 
I did guess in the end that it would end up being Dr. Matthews, unfortunately. Uh, and the reason I guess that is because his interest that he took in Nicole very early on and how persistent he was didn't, it felt over the top. I was going to say it didn't feel natural. It felt over the top and it just really telegraphed to me as a viewer, okay, you know, they're, they're trying too hard to insert this guy into the narrative. He's got to end up being the killer for that reason. And I ended up being right. So the cabaret dance in this early on with Nicole, very long scene. Obviously, they got to throw the sex appeal in there. Once again, I know I've said this on other Giallo reviews, but uh, they tried to put a lot of nudity into the films because apparently they could. it was easier for them to get into the Japanese market that way because they really wanted nudity back then. Just saying what I read. So the cabaret dance was long, and then there was that sex scene between Nicole and Michelle, and then it's followed by another dance scene uh, so it kind of seemed for quite a while that that was kind of like the focal point of the film. And I was like, okay, we had the death. We heard about the diamond heist. Why are we spending so much time now at this cabaret? Sex appeal, obviously. Michel is a douche. Uh, <laughs> the fact that he like throws that knife in, at Nicole and I think he'd have been drinking. It kind of seemed like he had been drinking. He's always actually, he's always drinking in this basically. He's like a drunken idiot for the most part. Uh, but it makes him seem kind of like aggressive and unhinged at that point. And that's supposed to be, you know, he's the red herring. You're supposed to think, oh my gosh, this this is the guy. And then especially when Nicole finds the um, blue contacts, which are obviously found at the very end to make you think that he did it. And that's why Nicole initially flees, but goes to Dr. Matthews to be like, get me out of here, which... I guess, like, at first my response was like, would she really run into the arms of this person who she doesn't really know? But I guess she kind of got the idea that he had a lot of money, so that would be, like, a quick, easy way to get out of there. Plus, she might assume that since he has money and since he's a guy, because this was the 70s, uh, that she would be protected, you know. But she was running into the arms of the enemy, the person who would end up killing her. Yes. And then put her on ice, literally. It's funny. Uh, the attack on Nicole is real weird, uh, showing her the knife, ripping her dress, and tying it around her head. That was the initial attack uh, before she goes and finds the uh, contacts in Michelle's bathroom. Um, real weird attack. Like, he he doesn't, like, try to cut her or anything. He just, like, shows her the knife, and then he, like, rips up her clothes and, like, puts it up and, like, ties it around her head so she, like, can't see him. I don't understand. She already saw him, though. Like, it's it's so weird, but... That's the thing, like, there are those little weird kind of quirky things in the film that endear it to me even more. Like, I love those aspects of this film. I really, really do. The reveal of the blue contacts at Michelle's are just too early to make Michelle, Michelle the killer. Also, he's a drunken idiot, like I said. Yeah, it's just introduced way too early for me to believe he was actually going to be the killer. Um, but at the end, when the inspectors then find those contacts on him, I was like, are they really going to do this? Like, are they really going to make it that stupid and simple? And I was like, I really hope not, because I still think it's Dr. Matthews, and they still went there. I was like, okay, good. That's what they should have done. So I like how Dr. Matthews introduces Nicole to people at the villa, and they are just, they, they just, like, stare at her like weirdos. Like, every single person he's introduced her to is just, like, staring at her. And they all kind of look like, not your best-looking people, they all kind of look like, Circus folk, maybe? Is that bad to say? Like, old school circus folk? Just saying. They show the hidden gun in this, so it has to get used. That's that whole old thing where, like, if you see a gun in film, it will be used later. So I took note of that, because that's always in my mind, where Dr. Matthews showed her that kind of secret compartment where the um, fireplace was, basically, with the gun in it. And then later on, when he was saying the diamonds were there, I was like, oh, he's going to pull the gun because that's where the gun's kept. And sure enough, if you see a gun in a film, it's going to get used. They don't just show it to you for no reason. All the time spent looking at Nicole through the telescope really does create a voyeuristic feeling. Uh, so I like that aspect of it. You know, you're looking through this little hole and you're kind of following the events of what's going on. It feels cool. It works really well. Now we find out later that's obviously... Obviously, Captain Lenny getting his jollies, which he admits to the police later like an idiot. Uh, so, yeah, interesting. The procedure on the eyeball had me clenching up and basically holding my breath. Those types of things 
like there are certain body related things if they're shot in a certain way like it really makes me like ooh, and that one did like he's like doing the the little metal thing around like the cornea or around the iris and then like pulling that that uh piece off i was like oh that's ooh, that was something i wasn't expecting nicole to end up being found dead I actually kind of thought that Nicole would make it through the entire film. So when she turned up dead, I was pretty surprised. I was like, oh, they went there. So I was like, okay, that's good. Michelle really does try to make himself look bad. Uh, like when he went to Vanessa's house and started smacking her around, which led me to believe even more that there's no way he's actually the killer. Because obviously in these Jalo films, they try to lead you as far away from the actual suspect or the actual person who did it as possible. They try to introduce tons of red herrings, and they did an okay job with this one. With Giallo films, if someone says they'll tell you later, newsflash, they won't because they're going to end up dead like Vanessa did. As soon as she said that, because I've seen that so many times in Giallo films, like, I'll tell you tomorrow or I'll tell you later. Nope, they never will. They never will because they'll be dead. And so as soon as Vanessa had said that, I was like, she's going to be dead. She's going to be dead. And she was. I do like the shot of the uh, maid seeing Vanessa through the keyhole when she was dead. That was really cool. It was like the, the shape of the keyhole and you just see like her bloodied head laying down on the bed. I thought that looked really good. And uh, they really do take their time in this film, like following the inspector around as he's doing his inspection of, you know, trying to figure out this, this case. So I do think for that reason, it would be nice if it was kind of cut a little bit to kind of you know, get it down, because it's almost, so it's like, I think an hour and 47 minutes is what I remember, and yeah, it could be cut down, but you know, this was from the 70s, like, they kept the films longer back then. People had more patience. The twist of the ice being used to preserve Nicole's body, I thought was a really cool introduction. Also, when they show you how the ice is made, like that ice plant, like, it was this gigantic, um, square like this um rectangle this huge rectangle of ice and apparently he got three of those dr matthews got three of those to like put on her body and then like lowered it down into the water to keep her preserved to mess with the time of death for the coroner i thought that was a cool aspect to it i think that's really like putting a lot into the details and i haven't seen it done before so i thought that was cool uh, I like the dueling investigations, especially when Michelle ends up stealing the inspector's car. Uh, Michelle, early on, just was like this bumbling, drunken idiot to me. But he, I mean, he obviously kind of like tries to endear himself to everyone um, as a character, I mean. And he does, you know, like he's doing his investigation. He's trying to get justice for Nicole because he actually did like her. Meanwhile, the investigator's doing his job and then they're crossing paths and then it all kind of culminates to a degree when Michelle steals the car. So I, I, I quite like that. Uh, it was funny, you know, comedic moments to it. It should be no surprise to Captain Lenny that he gets arrested since he admitted to being a thief, being a peeping Tom and witnessing a murder and not saying anything about it. Uh, I like Captain Lenny as a character. He was such like this nutty, weird dude. Plus his house. His house was really cool. I really enjoyed seeing the inside of that house. Uh, cool scene. Um, the scene where the alarm during the heist, that kind of like flashback of what was going on with the heist with the guy who had been blinded with the blowtorch, that whole scene where it's revealed how he got blinded with the blowtorch was really funny. I mean, the fact that he was like, I don't know. It's just, it's the way they shot it. It's the way it was acted. It's really funny. Like, the alarm happens. The guy, like, turns around real quick with the blowtorch just, like, right in his eyes. It was comedic. It was comedic to me. It really was. Um, I also laughed when the fish merchant gave Matthews away in front of the police. Like, it's such a dumb way for the killer to go down by the fish merchant just coming by and being like, oh, hey, how about those three blocks of ice that you ordered the other day? And then the inspector's like, oh, killer. Uh, <laughs> it was just such a weird kind of like, oh, by the way, way of catching the killer. I think they could have done a better job with that. But once again, it's quirky. It's funny. I kind of think that adds to the experience of the film for me. Um, and in the end, I guess, right, my suspicion was Matthews because he was so aggressive in trying to get with Nicole, like I said. Um, I don't know if anyone else out there guessed it, but yeah. Uh, by the time Michelle ended up tackling Matthews, because they have that whole thing in the end where Matthews is getting away, Michelle goes after him. Now, 
when he had left the house, Matthews had left the house, he shot someone and then kept running. But then by the time Michelle gets to him and tackles him, he doesn't have the gun anymore for some reason. He would still have the gun, most likely, because he didn't, like, fall or anything at that point. Although, I mean, he did when he was tackled, but I think he may have still had the gun, and he could have even shot him before he got tackled. Um, my point being, Michelle should have been shot at that point. Matthew should have gotten away, in my opinion. Just saying. Uh, I do love the, the scene of Michelle just bitch-slapping the hell out of Matthews when he gets him on the ground he's like whack 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 and then he almost goes too far because then he like picks up a rock and I was like I was laughing because of the smacking and then he picks up the rock and I was like oh but then he was stopped by the police and then he was just you know kind of brought his anger into check and that's actually just another aspect of who he was, who Michelle was, you know, he was an aggressive dude, he went over the top, he was smacking around Vanessa, like, he had a tendency to just go over the top, and when he was first found to be in the area, he had been getting into bar fights, you know, getting drunk and getting into bar fights, the man is overly aggressive, cannot stop himself, so, just saying. Anyway, so this was a good one, and I will say I'd showed you this already, but this this arrow release, like the way it looks, the way they clean this up, it looks really good. It looks really clean. And if you like this film and you've been thinking about getting this version, this arrow version of it, definitely do. It's it's a nice Blu-ray. It looks really great. I'm gonna need to check out some of the extra features though. So anyway, uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give this a very solid three and a half star rating. Like I said, it's one of my, the better Giallo films I've seen. So it makes me even more interested in getting Death Walks at Midnight too. Um, you know, I'm not assuming it will necessarily be as good because, you know, sequels or sequel-esque type films aren't necessarily as good, but I'm just intrigued now. But great one. I uh, really enjoyed this. I'd love to hear your comments on this. Uh, if you've seen it, did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it in between? Go ahead and put it in the comments and we'll get nerdy about it. But do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button if you can. And you can because it literally takes you a second. Painless, free. That is your way to let me know that you like this video or any video you have ever watched of mine. Uh, and that's a great way to repay me because it keeps me going. It keeps me motivated when I see people joining this kind of nerdy horror community I'm trying to create. So I do appreciate that. Also hit the notification bell button. That way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new videos like this in-depth review or some no-spoiler reviews for newer video, uh, newer movies or unboxings, opinion pieces, haul videos, all that stuff. But regardless, I really do thank you for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.